In summary, the many elements of professionalism can be described in one simple sentence. Treat every patient as if they were your closest and dearest friend or family. Without fail, you'll do what's right for them. Every day in your practice will be a joy because you'll be with friends, family, or both. What more wonderful way to make a living? Also, never underestimate your importance as a dental assistant. Dental assistants spend the most time with patients over the course of their treatments. Your responsibility in calming their fears is great, so be proud of your role in helping them heal. Infection control is just what it says. It's our efforts to minimize disease, and it involves three areas of concern. First, what you do to personally protect yourself, including proper hand washings, the use of protective equipment. Second, how you recycle the dental instruments so that patients are protected from each other. And last, the manner in which the treatment areas are prepared between patients. From the mandatory hepatitis B vaccination for employees directly involved in patient care to making sure that every instrument used in every patient's mouth is sterile, each step of the infection control process is equally important. In fact, if you're asked which one is the most important, the simple answer should be the one I'm doing now. Besides the vaccine mentioned, two other elements of infection control protect you as a dental assistant. The first is hand washing and the second personal protective equipment. There's no question about it. Proper hand washing is the single most effective means to prevent disease transmission. It begins the complex chain of sterility. The hand washing sequence is methodic and simple. On arriving at work, remove all of your jewelry including your watch. Rings can harbor germs, and your watch may enable them to travel home with you, so if you must wear a watch in the office, use one that remains at the office. Turn on the water with the foot controls or using a paper towel. Scrub your hands vigorously, paying particular attention to the nails, and use a good antimicrobial soap and very warm water. It's real important to use a good antimicrobial soap as it leaves a residual protective barrier on your skin. Develop a good lather. Remember this, bubbles are bad for germs. Use a hand brush on your nails and fingers and palms. Rinse well with cold water. And then wash your hands again. Just as shampooing your hair is more effective when done twice, so is hand washing. Finally, dry your hands with a clean, disposable paper towel, and if necessary, turn off the faucet using the towel. Remember, if your sinks don't have foot controls, use some form of cover to turn the water off or to control its temperature. Then, every time before gloving and after removing your gloves, wash your hands again, but just once. This hand washing sequence is also repeated as the last thing you do at the end of the day before leaving the dental office. Bacteria, funguses, and viruses, these can all thrive in the warm, moist environment under the latex glove as they lay against your skin. Frequent hand washings throughout the day removes them before they have any chance of causing you any harm. Any surface of your body that may be exposed to contaminants must be covered and this includes the hair when doing certain surgical cases, when hair caps are used for both the assistance and the patient's protection. However, hair covers are still not effective unless the clean hair is pulled back from the face and out of the field of treatment. As barriers to contaminants, gowns, gloves, masks, safety glasses, face shields, these should all resist wicking moisture. This usually entails using latex, plastics, and fabrics that are made of blends of synthetic fibers. All disposables used in patient care and contaminated with saliva or blood should be considered infectious waste. They should be placed in a red garbage bag or one that has affixed the universal biohazard emblem, 
depending on the local code. Management of your reusable contaminated protective gowns involves washing them in the office or using a professional laundry service. As an employee, you should never take them home to launder them yourself. In addition, they should never be worn out of the office. One gown may suffice for a morning or an afternoon work period, or both, or until it becomes visibly soiled. The procedure for using your personal protective equipment follows a rather logical course. First, gather together the needed materials like face masks, gloves, gown, eyewear. Remember to remove all of your jewelry, including your watch. Next, wash your hands as we described just a few minutes ago. Then, cover your scrubs or your uniform with the protective gown. Next, place foot or hair covers if either one or both are used, and then prepare the treatment area for the procedures. Put on your mask and safety glasses or face shield. And finally, after the patient is seated, put on your gloves in full view of the patient. This helps assure them that they are being cared for properly. When the treatments are completed, remove your gloves and face covering. Dismiss the patient and remove the instruments from the treatment area wearing heavy rubber gloves. If disposable, Remove and discard the gown covering and hair or foot covers, grasping areas that were not exposed to the treatment field. If the gown is reusable, change it if it's visibly soiled. And then wash your hands. Remember, don't touch anything dirty with bare hands, and don't touch anything sterile with dirty hands. Gloves offer incredible protection. It once was acceptable to examine patients with clean but bare hands, and with the onset of glove use, many patients became threatened by this implication that they were infectious people. Of course they are, but we don't tell them that. Thankfully, barehanding days are over. Gloves are an important and universal part of infection control. It's not even acceptable to handle dentures and things like that without gloves. Now, who would want to, anyway? While you'll use different kinds of gloves in the dental office, it's the latex gloves that make up most of your use. They're usually ambidextrous, meaning the same one fits the right or the left hand, and they come in various sizes. The ones used in more complex surgery may also be sterile and packaged individually as a set. Some offices also stock clear vinyl food service type gloves. They slip on very quickly for transporting dental prostheses to the lab, for adjusting crowns or dentures and a variety of other tasks. They can also be used over latex gloves when briefly leaving the treatment room. Of course, have them out ahead of time to avoid reaching into a clean box of them with dirty hands. And finally, heavier duty rubber gloves like the Playtex brand are worn when handling contaminated sharp instruments and when cleaning the treatment area. They are the only gloves in the dental office that should ever be washed and reused. All gloves used in dentistry should meet FDA standards and be free of holes or defects. Simply using gloves is not enough. They should be properly removed to ensure continued protection from contamination. First, grab the inner edge of the non-dominant hand's glove, usually the left hand, and lift and pull it off the hand while turning it inside out. While holding onto that glove, the now bare fingers of this hand are inserted inside the dirty glove and pulling it down and off the hand inverts it over the other glove. Watch this process again. Both are then dropped into a disposal bag that's marked as biohazard. 
masks or clear face shields are required when there's a risk of saliva or blood splatters. Once damp, masks lose their efficiency and should be changed. In addition, a new mask should be used with every patient. Flat, pleated masks with ties or ear loops are slightly more effective than dome masks that have elastic straps because of a tighter fit. Either one is acceptable, though. However, the dome mask doesn't become damp as quickly and is good for longer procedures. The proper way to remove the mask is by grabbing the securing strap with your bare hands in the back after your gloves have been removed. Be sure to place the dirty mask in the proper biohazard bag. Unless disposable, face shields must be cleaned and disinfected with chemical surface sprays between each patient. There are times when masks may not be worn. The doctor might elect to forgo one if it's in the patient's best interest, like when working with very young or fearful patients, or when there's an immediate and dire emergency. These are the rare instances when the face shield excels. If a face shield is worn in routine treatments, it may still be prudent to wear a mask since dental aerosols are very fine and can migrate behind the shield and be breathed in. Proper fitting safety glasses with side shields are absolute musts when there's a possibility of flying debris, patient coughs and sneezes, or other potentially injurious incidents. Any of these can result in blindness. Prescription eyeglasses are acceptable if side shields are added. Just remember to disinfect them before leaving the office at the end of the day. There are also goggles available that may be worn over your prescription eyeglasses if desired. At the end of each treatment, after the gloves and mask have been removed and discarded, used safety glasses and face shields are removed and placed near the other items to be disinfected between patients, like the neck chain. Now watch the assistant put on and then remove her personal protective equipment and prepare herself for patient care. Note the logic in the sequence and watch as she remembers that clean hands don't touch dirty surfaces and dirty hands don't touch clean surfaces. First, gather all of the personal protective equipment that's needed. Remove all of your jewelry, including your watch. Place your gown coverings, including shoe or hair covers if used. Prepare the area for the treatment and seat the patient. Place a mask in the eyewear or face shield. And finally, put your gloves on, preferably in front of the patient. When a patient's care is completed, remove the gloves as we described earlier. Next, remove your face mask or face shield. Dismiss the patient. And finally, wash your hands properly. It's all that simple. Every non-disposable dental instrument that enters a patient's mouth must be sterile, period. And with that borne in mind and emphasized to the patient, confidence builds. So use disposable items whenever possible and then flaunt that fact to the patient. And never ever reuse a disposable. That is tantamount to using somebody else's toothbrush. The process of recycling dental instruments is very concise. One step skipped may compromise the entire process. Again, the most important step is the one being done now. Items removed to the sterilization area from the treatment room are first pre-cleaned by lightly scrubbing them under running water with a brush while wearing heavy rubber utility gloves. This process removes the gross debris. If this is not immediately possible, place the instruments in a disinfectant bath. This keeps them wet, ready for sterilization. Different dental procedures dictate different sterilization procedures. Small endodontic files, dental burrs, finer surgical instruments, these all have unique properties that require special care. These are addressed in the individual tapes covering these various procedures. Ultrasonic cleaning 
uses special sound waves and solutions to remove the finest debris. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for loading and running the machines. In no case should you ultrasonicate for less than five minutes, though. Make sure that all instruments are covered with the clear, viable, ultrasonic cleaning solution. That means not overloading the basket. Some instrument packaging systems keep items grouped by procedure and in sequential order in special cassettes. These are usually ultrasonically cleaned for a longer period, say 15 minutes minimal, as the pre-cleaning stage is skipped. The cartridge is then rinsed and lightly dried and checked for broken or out-of-place instruments before being wrapped for sterilization. An indicator may be placed within to later ensure its passage through the sterilization process.